Welcome. Mark, Hello. are you there? Can you hear me? I'm, yeah, I can hear you. All Actually, right. we, <laughs> a few hours ago, we were here, right? Yesterday? Yeah, we were just here yesterday. Well, real quickly, hello, everyone. <laughs> hello. IoT Happy Hour, episode 52. And we're going to be showing off flashing x86 devices like an Intel Nook. I have something quite similar, not quite a Nook, but almost a Nook on my desk, ready to go. Mark, I think you have something just uh, something, about yeah. like a Nook, ready to go. To be yeah. fair, um, yep, there it is. To be fair, sure. there are some uh, engineering <laughs> sample, not for, is that gonna work? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, Let's discover that line. Yeah, we're gonna find out right now. Let's make um, some bets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> say your prayers. Um, to be fair, there are some ARM devices that follow a similar pattern to what we're going to show today as well that have EMMC on board. But we're going to be talking about flashing devices that don't use an SD card, but instead have some internal storage of their own. Um, before we get into that, let's do a quick recap Mark, you and I were on a stream for a long time yesterday. What were we talking about? Yeah, we were talking about, yeah, yesterday we had the release party number six. Yep. And we were releasing the Belena Hub open fleets. So going towards the Belena Hub roadmap, we released something really, really great on, on this roadmap that it's the open fleets. That means that anyone now can self serve an application on Hub. So you don't need to get into our acceptance of an application mm -hmm. and <clears throat> plus um, now you can lead a fleet so you can yeah uh, enable people or inspire people and that can be part of of your fleet from your application so that's that's really interesting maybe yeah. i can show the screen and and, sh mm -hmm. and share uh, let me see we will do some um, craziness but uh oh there's the crazy yep sorry can you see my screen? I sure can. And what's that careers page? We're going to talk about that in a yeah. moment. But so All this right. is a new app. We will. So I think next week maybe we should talk about app, right? We can yeah. The ball, the, the sixty, the sixty minutes with some hardware hackers here. Yeah, but absolutely. This... Last week or last week, uh, yesterday <laughs> we had the release party. So I wanted to make sure that everything is smoothed out and ready to go. But next week we will dive into this in detail. Absolutely. But yeah, I just wanted to show that, well, first of all, developers who had the application on HAP don't get mad when they don't see their application here. So you have to do some changes. I contact most of the developers from HAP. So read the email, read the instructions that are on our blog. And if you have any question, any feedback, feel free to write us on the forums, by email, by yep. smoke signals, whatever you think. It will arrive. And we have actually two new applications. Actually, we have a Helium Light Hotspot that it was a surprise. The first uh, application, and actually, we have something new here from David Tischler's one organization. Uh, <laughs> that's Let's still there, see. huh? And the yeah. map is working. Uh, awesome. Look at this. We ha you have you are the fleet owner of three devices. Actually, that and, is uh, that are using this application. Correct. Now, wait a minute. Yesterday, when we pushed this live, I was the first one. Uh, that point in Phoenix in the US. And then that Chris was on the stream and joined from the United Kingdom. Now, what's this one in Australia? Where did that come from? Huh. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know either. either. Oh, You're a fleet owner right now. I'm a fleet owner. So yeah. Um, it's the, the nice thing of these open fleets as well is that as a user to belong to a fleet, you don't need to create a Blena cloud account. So that's as well. Yeah. Really nice. So somebody was able to just go to Hub. Exactly. You just do these. Click the button. Yeah. I have a Pi Choose. 4. I yeah. put my Wi Fi credentials. I don't know the OS. Flash the SE card. Boom. And Stellarium comes. works. Right online. That is incredible. Um, well, I better make sure that I maintain that application. Um, <laughs> now you have the responsibility of being yeah. a fleet owner. Yeah, <laughs> I sure do. Boy, I didn't even think about that. I was just hacking yesterday and testing it out. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure now. Actually, let's see if I'm in a sound. 
Yeah, uh, we have yeah one surprise in Sweden as well. Sweden, so. somebody in Sweden. All right. No one in Atlanta works at Sweden, so no, we don't have any. Uh, how about the helium spot, uh, hot spot? Yeah. Who pushed that? I can't quite see. Is that you? So we can I see can't... two in no, <laughs> two in the UK. Two in the UK. Awesome. Uh, and I see so it works nice. on a beagle bone and a. Tink well, yeah, this board? is uh, this is something that we need to talk next week, but yeah. Okay. This All is right. uh, well, we, we'll talk about helium like hotspot maybe in a couple of weeks. No worries. All right. Very and good. We should talk about yeah that Valena is hiring. What do you think? Yeah, let's absolutely do that because I see a new one on there. We've already talked about open source maintainer for Etcher, front end engineer, security engineer, design your own role. But what's that one at the top right there? Fulfillment coordinator. Hmm. Yeah, looks like uh, I haven't talked with the uh, Grease team, but looks like that we need someone who helps on the on the Athens office to to manage the inventory and and help the Athens team. That actually it's a really cool team. Actually, we have Alex. Alex, uh, no, we have who do we have? And Andreas, right? Uh, it was Andreas on the Andreas was on the stream. What we episode was that? Pinky shot. Yeah. After the summit, actually, I don't, I don't remember the number. Maybe in the yeah. twenty something. <laughs> uh, so about six months ago. So about yeah. twenty something, maybe early thirties. Uh, but um, yes, correct. We do hardware fulfillment uh, and some operations out of Athens. So it looks like that would be. Um, I, I guess that one would not be one of our remote friendly postings. I think that would require someone who's able to go into the office. So if you're in Athens, uh, by all means, give that one a look. Yeah, absolutely. If you know anyone based in Athens yeah. and that they yep. love hardware and having fun and what are <laughs> Super smart yes. people, yeah. Yep, absolutely. And what is this? I see some comments, some trolls rolling in already. My ceiling <laughs> fan. I can turn my fan off, I suppose. Maybe a little but less you will start sweating or No, 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 no. Well, I mean it's Arizona, of course. Yeah, of course I am, right. But uh all right, we can we can turn that off. No problem. A little less distraction, as opposed to just moving the camera. Um, and then Sahaj trolling with the taking my twelve dollar nook for a spin today. Yeah. My twelve dollar nook is on my desk, but we're not gonna work on that one today. I don't think. Yeah, this uh, is what we'll, I told you, no? Yesterday, yeah. like, hey, yeah, let's yeah. Get, your... <laughs> get my twelve dollar nook ready. Uh, it's lacking a few parts that a nook would normally come with. Uh, everything except for the motherboard, to be exact. But we'll we'll show that off in a moment. All right, so let's yeah, actually, I, what's on your desk? Yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. Uh -oh. uh, Chris promised us a new jingle, but we didn't get it recorded yet. So we'll have to go with regular, uh, Chris, I, I guess. Um, I don't have anything other than my $12 knuck, though. What a you... yeah. What's on your desk? <laughs> All right, perfect. So I do have my $12 knuck as described. Uh, this is absolutely not a nook. This is a motherboard <laughs> from a laptop, a little like two in one tablet device thing. Um, but it is an Intel Atom, I want to say 30, no, 8350 maybe. I can't remember exactly. And I was just doing some hacking and some experimenting um, just to see if I could get Bellina OS onto it. And uh, the short answer is yes, absolutely. It was quite easy. Um, everything is in this PCB that you need. The processor, the memory, EMMC for storage. Uh, it's got USB, HDMI, and a USB-C power input. It has Wi-Fi. Bought myself some antennas for it. It's everything you need. It's uh, almost a knock. <laughs> Actually, I took the hard way without watching this video. Uh, I yeah, I could valentify a, a NAC or a, yeah, an X eighty six uh, device. But yeah, let's get into that in in a second. Yeah, yeah. Let me show you what I have on my desk. All right. That you will be happy to see. Okay, let's switch to you. Yep, there we go. 
Well, I have a table here, so I will try to work standing up at some point. But yeah, that's another story. OK. But I have these. Look. A solar panel. All yeah, right. That's a good one. A good one. Oh, nice. Yeah, that is a I good one. I would not one. need to solder, but yeah, I need to put some cables and manage the electricity. Uh... You just use some tape. Just use some uh, electrical tape, black. <laughs> It'll be perfect. Um, but we are getting okay. there. We are getting into the yeah. solar powered fin project. Oh, awesome. I'm looking forward to that. I still have been experimenting. I think I told you previously, but we can probably uh, share that I bought some cheap battery packs. Uh -huh. And uh, it turns out they cannot charge and power a device at the same time <laughs> it's one or the other so uh you have to wait for the battery if the battery is discharging then uh you can run your fin no problem or pi or whatever uh, and then once the battery dies it'll start charging back up meanwhile your fin is offline so we're gonna have That's to revisit very, uh, uh <clears throat> useful, these yeah. uh, amazon sellers failed to mention that in the description so to, Luckily, uh, the yeah, the battery, battery drawing solves board. that. It's not on AliExpress, right? You can buy in a, on a yeah, well. Computer. Yeah, at least I didn't have to wait three months to, to <laughs> for these to arrive and find out. But uh, yeah, the sellers failed to mention that. So uh, back to the drawing board there. But all right, anything else on your desk? Yeah, I have a couple. Well, I I, I don't know if I a already show more? these. I found this. Yeah, finding my my X eighty six devices. I found these. And actually, this is a camera. It's a what? car camera. OK, like a dash cam? No, a, a oh, camera okay. that, like the camera that uh, most of the cars now have, like be, oh, behind oh, the car that? for parking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what? yeah, I okay. can try it later. All right, give that a try, <laughs> yep. And then yeah, I, I bought, yeah, something that we can use on, on, on next episodes i don't know when but yeah because we have yeah the agenda full but i i i bought this what is that oh zigbee okay uh i thought i saw the other day that they renamed or rebranded themselves um uh, yes. i can't remember yeah i have to look i saw i thought i saw a headline but um that'll be good for home assistant and some home automation uh, projects then all right. And some other, uh, yeah, and some other gateway projects that uh -oh. maybe we will be able to share. Uh, oh boy, looks like you're scheming. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know what you're up to, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? I think, uh, yeah, that's all. I, I want to keep something else on, on my table because last two weeks I couldn't show anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my is asking. Yeah. Yeah, it's there. It's, uh, I have a tons of. <laughs> yeah. Shit there, so. Yeah. Uh, 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 things. Things. I, things. <laughs> stuff. Tons of stuff yeah. there. <laughs> so I, yeah, I have a camera here because I want to point to my second display. So today I had to yeah change. I stuff. have an equally terrible setup here on my desk over to my right. Um, yours is actually superior. I like the way that's set up right there. Mine is. <laughs> Pretty bad. We're gonna we're gonna find out. I need to look into. Um, I see Sahaj is in the audience. I think he's uh, got a couple of these HDMI adapters that allow you to screen capture what is coming out of the HDMI output from a device. Wow, like a how do you like, do that? Like a single board computer. I don't know. I we'll have to get him in the comments or get him in here to explain it. Yes, um, but there Sahaj. are. There are these oh, little dongles. Yeah, there's these dongle adapters that uh, grab the HDMI output from a device and turn it into an HDMI or I guess probably USB mimicking camera. a camera input to your laptop. Yeah, there it is. Okay, Cam Link 4K. Um, yeah, it's so on we'll, AliExpress, yeah. Oh, it's on AliExpress. I'll get it in three months then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. And then Gary, the HDMI dongles for HDMI to USB. Yeah, they're like 20 or 30 bucks. So I think we're going to have to uh, hashtag order a couple of those because when I went to set this up last night, I realized, wait a minute. Now, how am I going to get the 
BIOS, wow, like Grub, uh, and almost how much? Two hundred fifty dollar on AliExpress. Gary says they're twenty to thirty dollars. Uh, Gary, oh, maybe yeah. give us a yeah, maybe uh, get us okay. a link to what you're talking about. Yes, please put it in the comments yeah, for everyone. On AliExpress. Well, Sahaj might have a good one that does cost two hundred. I'm going to look for the twenty to thirty dollar one. <laughs> so, yeah, the cheaper five to five to thirty. Hold on a minute. We get some five dollar ones, limited to ten eighty p. I, I could get by with that. Survive, better than right? yeah, it's we can survive. For, uh, <laughs> it's better it's than this for, setup I've got right now. <laughs> so, um, so Mark, I think you and I are going to do a little shopping for those. Exactly. But anything else, or should we get into it? Yeah, let's get into the X86 wall, actually. This is something new for me. I'm going to learn a lot and ask silly questions. All right, yours. no problem, no problem. Well, so this is sort of something I was thinking about over the course of the past week. Episode 51 last week, we had Ross join us and show off an array of devices. And we talked about the various use cases. We talked about how to choose hardware. And we had little tiny boards, we had Raspberry Pis, we had bigger NVIDIA stuff for AI. And he showed off that Intel Nook on his desk. And we talked about, uh, briefly talked about a couple of use cases for the Intel Nook. And I started to think about it more. The Intel NUC is the second most popular platform on Bellina Cloud, or as I should say, the second most popular device type on the Bellina Cloud platform. And I thought more about that and started thinking about why and what the use case is. And, you know, we sort of touched on it last week, but we went pretty quickly. And a couple of the major use cases and selling points for the Nook or something like a Nook, because there are uh, other types of hardware out there. Asus makes some. The Upboard is another example. Um, so I'm saying Intel Nook, but you know, generally speaking, an x86 small form factor device. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, and so the reason that customers of Bellina Cloud use those types of devices are a couple different reasons. Let's dive into those first. Yeah. One of them is quite simply the processing power. A Raspberry Pi, especially a one, a two, a three, a four is a bit more powerful. An NVIDIA device or some of the other, you know, there's the Tinker board we showed, um, Beagle Bones, for example. They just don't have the raw processing power of something like an Intel Core i3, i5, I think you can even get an i7 in a Nook. It's not apples to apples, I get that. The price point is not the same. A Raspberry Pi starts at $35, a Nook is gonna cost a few hundred dollars. It's not a fair comparison, I get that. But certain use cases are just lend themselves better to this type of processing power. One of the examples we spoke about just very briefly last week was yeah. an automotive manufacturer. And this automotive manufacturer has a couple of hundred vehicles out in the field, and they're doing very advanced, very granular mapping, high definition mapping of some cities. Okay, they have their vehicle and it is surrounded in cameras. And of course, I think it has multiple LIDARs. And so they're doing this high accuracy geospatial mapping. A Raspberry Pi just cannot keep up with that type of processing requirement. They actually use high end i7 um, processors. I would imagine they have 32, 64, maybe 128 gigs of RAM on them. Um, and, you know, they're bringing in this point cloud data, processing it, storing the video footage locally on the device, multiple NVMe or USB drives, multiple terabytes. And, you know, they go back to the lab and offload all of that. But the point is, is they need a lot of horsepower in that vehicle um, mm -hmm. while it's out doing this uh, high resolution mapping. Um, so that's one 
situation. Another one is digital signage. So there's a there's quite a few customers in the Bellina Cloud platform that run menu boards in restaurants. And they have, when you walk into um, one of the restaurants and you have three or four big TV monitors on the wall, an Intel Nook can drive all of those monitors in one fell swoop. Some of them have three display outputs. You might even be able to get away with adding some additional ones via USB um, or um, U like USB-C or um, uh, Thunderbolt if they have them. I'm not entirely sure. But anyways, the point is this natively can drive three displays, can probably get yourself up to four or five. So you can have your nook and your wall of panels. Um, a Pi or typical single board computer has one, maybe two outputs. The Pi 4 is the first unit to ship with two HDMI ports. Um, but so then again, that's, you know, a maximum of two displays. So again, if your project or your use case is signage and you need multiple panels, then NUC is perfect for it. So, um, so like I was saying, it's the second most popular uh, device on the platform. So I thought well, we should probably take some time to go through that. And probably it's the most easy for us to, to manage, right? As a Bellina OS point of view? From a Bellina OS point of view, yes. In the ARM world, and we've talked about this in the past as well, but in the ARM world, we build an OS for each type of device that we support. The start with, you know, a Beagle, for example. There is a black, there is a green, there is a green wireless. There is one or two more that I can't remember, a pocket, pocket Beagle uh, as well. And we have to build a different operating system, mostly the same, but truly have to build a unique OS for each of those devices. And then the same thing for the Pis. There is the Pi 0 and 1, there's the Pi 2, the Pi 3, the Pi 4. We have to build a separate image for each of those device types. And you see that in the drop down menu when you go to choose the um, choose the uh, device uh, when creating the application. Okay, uh, and the Jetsons, same thing. Choose a Jetson Nano, and then you have to choose even more specifically whether it's a Nano with an SD card or a Nano with eMMC. And all of this revolves around the fact that the ARM devices do not have a common or standard boot implementation the way that the x86 devices do. <laughs> I see uh, Sahaj is waiting for a, a public release. Okay, well... Uh, thought we found a repo for that, but that might be coming soon. Um, so in the x86 world, they all come with UEFI BIOS, um, you know, whether it's in Intel or in AMD, uh, the motherboard has flashed onto it some firmware that allows the device to boot. The ARM boards do not have that. And there's some ongoing work there. There are some standards that have been created. Some devices are you know, starting to go down that road and gravitate towards that. Um, one of the manufacturers, NXP, does a, a pretty good job of that. But all said and done, as it stands, we have to build those separate OSs for each of the device types. And I think they're, I counted them yesterday while preparing a talk. There's 69 of them. <laughs> and, uh, and you think that, that this is confusing uh, some of the, the users of Balena Cloud? Like imagine that I have, a, yeah, this Advantech. I go to Balena Cloud and I don't see Advantech on the list. I need to know that Advantech, it's an Intel NAC or it's a generic x86. So the, as, yeah, on ARM, I see all the mm -hmm. uh, you know, different devices, different models, but for yeah, you know, this type of processors, not. This is confusing. Well, or... I, I was on a support ticket about talking about that with a with the developer, actually. Yeah, there's pros and cons to that now that you mention it in that way. Um, I guess the 
I guess one of the advantages there is in the ARM world, although it's not ideal for us to build 69 different OSs in order to support those devices, that's obviously not scalable and not ideal. Being able to choose them from the drop down menu, it's pretty visually indicative. Just choose your device and away you go. Over in the x86 world, it's much easier for us to just build two or three different images. There is one that is specific to the Intel NUC. It only includes the drivers needed for the Intel NUC. And then there's the more generic but larger um, uh, uh, image for um, you know more inclusive hardware. Um, but I guess you're right in that a developer would need to know that Whatever their device type is, on Logic is a good example. They make probably 100 devices themselves. CompuLab, I think, may produce some x86 hardware as well. At Vantech, you know, AD Link produces x86 yeah. hardware also. All of those can just use the generic x86 image. But a developer would have to know a little bit to like, yeah, to select that one image. So I could, I could see how that could be a, be an issue. Um, hmm. All right. Well, that might be something to think about whether we should expose that list a little, a little better. Um, all right. Well, so let's do. Maybe we have a question before we uh -oh. get into the. Oh, what do we have here? Any chance of supporting RISC-V hardware? So that's something we have started to think about now, actually. Um, I know that one of our folks on the team does have the, what is it called? The Beagle 5, I think is the name mm -hmm. of it, which is the... So. Um, which is the one that just started shipping out within the past month or two um, to developers. So we have one in-house to hack on to truly support, as in like officially support, generate known good working images. I mean, I would say that that's probably a ways off. And quite honestly, that Beagle is not generally available to the public yet anyway. So um, I think that a day will come and maybe that day is still a year or two off when there yeah. are multiple readily available, easy to acquire, you know, risk five hardware, then, then yeah, there's, there's no problem. There's nothing wrong with, with that, but we're certainly, not at that point yet. Exactly. Um, what, what added value, right, can bring the yeah. five into the IoT? Yeah, exactly. Well, and so then that's another case, right? Okay. There's um, there's the availability of hardware, which is one thing. But then, yeah, you know, what does it bring to the Bolina Cloud platform? What you know are customers going to attempt to do? Um, and so I, I don't know, you know, yet what that looks like. So, I mean, the, I'm yeah. sure that the day will come, but who knows when that might be. Um, so we'll get there, though. All right. Any other questions before we get? Uh, well, it's worth it to test the build setup for all <laughs> large beforehand. That is true. Well, and that's why I say, like, so we have the Beagle 5 in-house, you know, just starting to learn about it and go through the um, go through the experimentation process. Okay. So if, if it's MVP <laughs> functionality on chemo. Yeah, and it's what is chemo? emulated. That's also true. Chemo okay. is emulation, cross architecture emulation. So if you have your laptop and it's an x86 laptop with an Intel processor, but you want to build software intended to run on another architecture, like ARM, 
64-bit ARM, or in that case, RISC-V, you use Kimu, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly, to uh, emulate another architecture. You could then spin up a VM in that architecture and do your development in that arch uh, emulated architecture. Um, Interesting has some pros and cons, you know, it's not as fast as real true hardware, uh, you know, clock for clock, um, but it's certainly an easy and portable way to do development cross platforms. Cool. All Let's right, get into your... so what do you think? Should we get into flashing one of these things yeah, yeah because let's do that. i want you to help All me right, yeah I want so to see the, the steps and, and you then will help me to to valenify the advantech yeah. <laughs> all right well we're gonna see if that thing is gonna work but uh i'm gonna test crisis on risk five what is he talking about um <laughs> yeah gotta play games on risk five that's what it's for all right um, so let's do this. One of the things I want to talk about first and foremost is let me grab this Visi AI Wait a and we can, whether it is an, oh, have it in its plexiglass back again. Um, for all intents and purposes, this thing is generally speaking, just like a knock. It has a processor. Intel, this one is an Atom. You can get it in i3 or i5 flavors as well. It has an HDMI out port, um, audio. It has Ethernet. It's got USB 3 and regular USB as well. Uh, it is a full computer just in a single form um, uh, PCB. Now, just like a Nook, which would really be a similar PCB design in its, you know, they come in a silver or a black case, um, take their power uh, straight in through the power jack, and a Nook will have either an SSD or a spinning HD, um, or you can insert in newer models NVMe, which is flash storage, mm -hmm. similar to an SSD, but goes into a um, M.2 slot. Um, the point being is that they don't boot from an SD card the way that a Raspberry Pi does or BeagleBone or NVIDIA Jetson, right? So, you know, we're used to talking about our single board computers that we flash our SD card, pop it into our Pi, and it boots up. In the NUC world, or generally speaking, other x86 devices as world, you don't do that. There is no SD card slot. So how do you get Bellina OS onto the SSD? How do you flash the device? How do you boot from, um, you know, how do you boot the thing up and get it into Bellina Cloud? And the answer is USB. So just like on a PC, when you want to install Linux on top of what a PC usually ships with being Windows, you use Etcher, you flash a USB stick with Ubuntu or um, Fedora or there's others out there as well. And you put the USB stick in and you choose from the startup menu on your device, boot from USB, and the device will then, you know, load up the Linux installer, and you go through the steps, and you um, essentially write Linux to the hard drive. Pull the stick out, reboot, and 
you then boot into Linux and it's bye-bye Windows. Okay, so Bellina OS is a Linux distribution. So we're gonna follow a similar uh, concept here. In order to flash a device, and I'm gonna switch over, I do not have this one preloaded yet, so I have to actually do the flash, which might take a few minutes. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll show you the process. And Mark, if you want to get yours hooked up as well, um, start, I don't know if it's already cabled up and, uh, <clears throat> and not, uh-oh, is my video quality? Yeah, it uh, was bad, yeah. but now it's better, yeah. It's back? All right, good, it's we're back right, in action. Yeah. Mm, better not be watching some Netflix over there. But uh, and I see RG has a question as well about what do I suggest? Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to interrupt the you. dev board under two hundred. Um, let me grab that one real quick. In fact, no. I'll start flashing this. Um, I'd say. Well, I have the one on my desk. This Visi AI is two hundred US exactly, um, and it's a good one. So I do recommend that. The upboard range, I haven't looked at recently. Mark, if you want to grab a link while I'm starting this flash on this USB stick, the upboards come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Um, and there's a few of them that we support on the platform. I have not looked at their prices recently, so I'm not entirely sure if they're under 200 or not. Um, but I sure. think that there are some. I think that there are some entry level ones that should come in in the hundred to hundred and fifty dollar range. There's another interesting device that I don't have. I have never tested on Bellina Cloud. Um, but should theoretically work, take that with a grain of salt, but it's by the name of Rock Pi X. And the Rock Pi X is another Intel Atom device. It's in the form factor of a uh, Raspberry Pi. So it's a really, really small x86 board. Um, but like I say, I don't know if it truly, truly works because I have not tested it. Run Windows on a Rock Pi, what? Yeah, um, it's an interesting little device. Um, and I wanna For say sure. it's in the $99 range. Yeah, there it is, the Rock Pi X. Um, so that, might be an option, but caution, there might be dragons. Okay, so in the meantime, what I've been doing is this. Let me share my screen. And Mark, I see your camera's getting ready, so you're in good shape. No, not that, share. Oh, you want to that I share? No, well, you, you do it first, and then I. I yeah. Know. Well, so what I did okay. is this. <clears throat> um, in Bellina Cloud, I just made a new application. Easy enough. Click the new application button like normal. I chose from the drop-down menu generic x86, and I I chose development and I had to put in Wi-Fi, no big deal. I hit the blue download Bellina OS mm -hmm. uh, image. Okay, and that downloaded already. I'm now, let's stop that one and go over to the other monitor. And I'm now actually flashing that image to that USB stick that I had in my hand. And we've got 26 seconds left or so, so we're okay there. <laughs> <laughs> so we're making we're making progress. We're good there. Um, and our <clears throat> nice 99. I could get two of them. Yeah, there you go. You had a $200 budget. You get two. Okay, <laughs> but the only thing is, is they're not tested. So you might have two paperweights, or I shouldn't say paperweights. You could use them for something else, certainly. Um, 
I just don't know if they'll work on exactly. the Molina Cloud. It'd be an interesting test. I wouldn't mind giving it a try. Maybe uh, instead of a uh, HDMI to USB dongle, I'll buy one of those instead and see what happens. <laughs> um, all right. This USB stick is almost done. It's validating now. And... Yeah, you can skip the video. Right? Yeah, but I it's too late. No race, no <laughs> fun. Yeah. No race, no fun. <laughs> yeah. All right, flash is complete. Let's grab this out of the laptop. And now this is where it's going to get pretty ugly. We're going to switch cameras over blurry to cam. a blurry cam. No, because the cord wouldn't reach. So I had to go into my box of cameras. <laughs> Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, we've oh, got oh, too nice. much, uh-oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, though, we have too much backlight now, hold on a minute, this might be a problem, oh no, I did not account for the sunlight, all right, well, let's see what happens after the LCD lights up, but this is certainly an issue, actually, let's see what happens, if not, you can jump to mine, or, yeah, we might have to jump no to worries. yours, all right, well, so what we're going to do, all right, Try. assuming that works, <laughs> All right. Well, hold on a minute. First things first. Let me come back to my regular. All right. Just like any other PC computer, when you want to boot from USB, USB stick is going in. I'm now going to get HDMI plugged in. And you need a keyboard? And you do need a keyboard and mouse. That is correct also. All right, we've got HDMI in, and we're going to power up in a second here. Now, this is where I hope this LCD is, I hope this monitor is bright enough to compensate for. All right, let's see what happens. I don't know. We may have to switch to yours, Mark. But I do have the keyboard and mouse attached. And oh, uh oh, can you move the camera? Like, yeah, that's what I'm gonna try to do. Okay. Let's see if we can get no, not really. Oh. Okay, yeah, all right, all right, yes, all right. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. So, this is the BIOS. This is the BIOS. So, I hit delete when the device was turning on to get to the A BIOS. Lot of times or just once, uh, <laughs> just once, just once. Press it, just smash oh, you know the, the right button. time, just smash the button. I was okay. like, there we go, yep. <laughs> All right. Cool. On the Visi AI, I have to go down to this bottom one here. You can see at the bottom, Secure Boot Menu. Mm -hmm. And I have to go to, uh, right now it is on, uh, blurry. it's already um, on, uh-oh. Now, enable. Okay. Yeah, let me see. Now, I'm going to Secure Boot Disabled. Okay. Going back out to the main menu, I'm going over to boot, and you can see the boot options here um, of what it's going to boot from. I'm actually going to go over here, though, and I'm going to go all the way down mm, to boot override. And look at this right here. It is detecting resin OS USB 3.0 PMAP. That is my USB stick. I'm just going to boot from that. And it starts booting Flash. Here comes the normal Linux boot process. And this will actually take eh, two, three, well, yeah. a couple minutes to boot up. OK. Now it has booted. We're sitting at a login prompt. I'm not actually going to log in, though. I'm going to come back over to What's my login? regular. Uh, I think it might be root. <laughs> but I'm going to come back, put that camera down. That's too much to deal with. Um, OK. So we booted the board up. There. There's not good on-screen indication right now, but it is in our documentation. <laughs> what is that for these? Our RIP breaking, oh, just the core didn't reach. And then sometimes F11 works as well. That's also the correct um, In the documentation of our flasher image type, 
when this device booted up, what it is doing right now, even though it is sitting at that login prompt, it is going through the steps in an automated fashion that would normally occur like when you're booting Ubuntu or Fedora and it's asking you a series of questions, time zone, create a user account, where do you want to install it to? Here in Bellina OS, it does all that automatically. So while this device is sitting here on the desk right now, it is actually copying over its payload from that USB stick to the hard drive on the Nook or the computer, mm -hmm. or in there are some uh, ARM boards that have EMMC on them. And again, similar uh, concept there. So there's no progress being rendered on the screen. I don't know if that is a feature that we could add or intend to add, but just know that it is literally copying the OS, the payload, from the USB stick onto the Nook right now. That'll take maybe five or six minutes, um, depending upon the speed of the, well, the speed of the USB stick and the speed of the target hardware. This is an Intel Atom. It's not the fastest, but it'll. it's, it's not a huge... Um, installation anyway. And when that is done, the board, the device will automatically shut down. It's simple as that. The USB stick transfers its contents onto the device. And upon completion, just shuts down. Um, so again, I can see the little LED flashing on the USB stick. I'll, uh, I don't know if I want to come back to overexposed cam or not, but um, let's do this as well. Let me come back to screen share. So th this was the process of the um, Fold for COVID application, right? Yeah, that's correct. That's exactly what the Fold for COVID application did. If you used like a spare laptop, um, in that case, we had preloaded the container okay. so that the container went with and was automatically installed and running. Um, but that is exactly the same as using an old laptop or an old computer um, for Fold for COVID. Yeah, it would automatically install Bellina OS and the Fold for COVID application and it fires right up. So and now I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking yep. something off topic, but it's related as well on production. If I want to go on production with uh, an X86, mm -hmm. Belena Etcher Pro can flash uh, X86 devices. That's a, maybe a question that you don't know. Yeah, that's, that's a right. great question. But, so let me think about that. I mean, okay, it, so. It can be tricky, right? If you have to go one by one with USB sticks. Right, that is true. That would be um, pretty tricky. Let me think about how to go. A... Maybe we can ask to Yeah, Pro I'm not sure. We'll have to ask. I don't know if anyone from the HR Pro team is, uh, is here. Feel yeah, free to sort of. I wonder if it depends upon the log in. Or not log in. I'm looking at the screen, says log in. Um, I'm wondering. Uh oh, it just finished. The, uh, oh. well, I don't have the camera on it. Remember when I had the camera on it, it just said it was sitting at the login prompt. Yeah. What I saw on the screen was the normal shutdown, similar to how we saw all that text fly by on the boot up process. The shutdown process just occurred. And so it was all that same um, text going by. So the device is off. I'm going to pull the USB stick out of it. USB stick is back. I'm going to unplug and replug the device. All right. And then it, it's gonna yeah, and now it's, it's gonna it's, it's gonna boot with the Belen OS. It's um, gonna boot. It's gonna boot. Uh, well, it's gonna try to boot from USB, but that's now in my hand. <laughs> so the next fallback is boot from onboard storage. And in fact, all right, we'll switch back over just for one moment. 
Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, you can see it going. Yeah. And, um, and there are no applications, right? On the, so there are no the applications other... yeah. yet, but there's the Bellina logo. Oh, wait a sec that I yeah, show your... Thumb. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so it's booting up. Cool. And I just realized that I do not have... So, a... David, let me show you my yep. problem because mm -hmm. we are getting... We have only 10 minutes. Okay. And I, would, I would like to show you my problem and see how you would solve that. Let me share my second camera. Okay. Let's turn mm, mine let's off. Let's get here. Okay. Switch over to so, yours. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure if we are going to see a lot. Uh, I, I'm going to move the phone. Yeah. But the thing is that, yeah, um, if I get here, Okay. We don't see USB. Okay, so yours is not detecting the USB. Oh, so let, let me move this, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, that's all right, yeah. So the same way, UEFI OS, what's that 250, oh, the 256 gig is the internal storage probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's that one that you're on right now? P1 SQF, what is that? Is that the same? This oh, is the, the same. Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, this this is the same. So yours is not detecting the USB stick. Now I have to wonder then if only certain slots, only, uh, how many USB ports does it have? Two, it's one, yeah, let me show here. Mm -hmm. uh, even if it's a small, it's okay. So it's only yeah. uh, one that yeah, it's USB see. two and USB three. All right, and which one do you have the USB stick in at the moment, the top one? <clears throat> yeah, on the three. The three, so. Mm -hmm. And does yours have the secure boot the way that mine did? Let's try. Go to secure boot disabled. It's um, it's disabled, right? No. It's disabled. It's, a, it's already. I can't quite see the text. Oh, sorry. Too small. No, that's but, all right. Is it, if, yeah. it's on, if it's on disabled, so I'd say pull that. So I'd say pull that USB stick out, put it in the other slot, and <laughs> let reboot. me show you. <laughs> let no, I tried. let me show you what I did, and and let's see if anyone from the audience can help mm -hmm. me as well. Let me show you what I did. Um. So I went here. Maybe this is oh. If you can. Well, I wanted to show real quickly. Ah, my cool. device came. My pop. It popped online. So there it is. Oh, but now let me come, let me kill my screen share. Okay. And get so you went to the shadows. Okay. Yeah, hang on. Okay, well, you shouldn't even have to do that. Then. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And then, ah. Uh, I did, I checked. Yeah, what I saw is this. Uh, but this one, really it's a removable. Yeah device so mm. I, dec I decided to mount this one oh or, or I just oh, to you're one. gonna kill this thing oh boy sure? <laughs> so what i tried it's this okay hey usb then i'm i map this as a usb so i get usb these and that remember oh they're not fun why not I can't remember the. Um, ah, maybe it's the, the other one. It's BLK9. No? Oh, I did it this way before. This is the hard way. Mm. Well, it's crazy that your. that yours is not just automatically detecting it the way that mine oh, did. Wait. I have it here, right? This is the. It should be this HD5, V655. Bring my camera back to me now. A2. Yes. No, <laughs> this is the hard disk. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, don't kill but, the drive. <laughs> don't kill it. <laughs> but it says Ubuntu, like, no, man, I, I, I just yeah, flash. Yeah, yeah. No, you're on the wrong drive. You're on the wrong drive in the wrong partition. Do exactly. not. <laughs> so I need to do the yeah. other one. 
I am surprised though, because mine just simply. Let's see if this this one. Yeah, it looks like. God, Just remember the OS, the deer. Yeah. And let's fingers crossed, pray to the gods that this is. Sorry for the camera. So you're fine. It's all right. That might be it. Let's try. Let's try this. Type boot. Type boot x86. Type boot x86. My uh, x84 64 yeah fine oh yeah yeah 64 sorry flash do fingers it fingers cross that should be it if there it goes yep and this is how I invest all <laughs> yeah most of my morning hacking uh, the real yeah, way <laughs> yeah, yeah you did the real hacking oh man okay well you got it as well. This is now why you understand that I put too many messages on, well, <laughs> on the car devoted to these. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you did some high quality hacking here. You went through EFI shell in order to manually locate and mount the USB stick and then boot from it. Mine did yeah, all of that. You can see that yep. it's resin device register. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Yep. Yeah. So Absolutely. So you did the real hacking. Um, mine I did through the GUI. <laughs> it was much easier. But yeah, um, I was like, oh, what? How David did that? Like, well, I, I mean, I just, I, I just hit right arrow, right arrow, right arrow, exactly. down, <laughs> down, enter. <laughs> that was it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and this is why I got to get the second one. Like, okay, maybe yeah. it's it's a problem of of the other one, but no. The, both of them had the same problem, so I need to get into yeah. Stack Overflow, yeah, uh, yeah and discover That's what right. was happening. And then I discovered this map uh, instruction. And actually, on this one, I only had it, it was the map was simpler than on the other one. The, this other one had Ubuntu. This one, I don't know what mm -hmm. had something else. Yeah. Um, so this one is already bellinified. And I wanted to do from scratch now live to show yeah, how I suffer. Yeah. I mean, while you were sleeping. <laughs> yeah, while I was sleeping still. You're over there <laughs> hacking EFI. Um, that so it process... says stopping disk. Um, wait a second. Let me show. Wait. What should I do now? So should I? Well, uh, that's going to take a few wait. minutes. OK. Yeah. Um... Actually, power off. Why did it power off already? Pull the. Yeah. That was pretty fast. Mine was. I mean, mine took so a few should minutes. I power it off and take the yeah. USB. Yeah. Yeah. Power it off. Take yeah. the USB out and then turn it back on, and we'll see what happens. Um, to power it off, you just pull the push the button like for. Uh, yeah. Press and hold probably. Okay, I get the USB. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's say our Ready prayers to the comments. demo gods. Yeah, I don't. That seemed a little bit fast. I don't know. Mine took what three, four, five minutes. I don't know. Uh oh. What was that? That's was a fast. good sign. That's a good yes. sign, though. Oh, that's not a good that's sign. Cool. No. Oh, what? Uh, yeah, yours is booting a little bit differently than mine. Starting resin mounts. Uh oh, there it goes. Now Done. 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 All right. 40, Success. 45 seconds before, yeah. Yes. Awesome. Did it. Now, does that device have Wi-Fi built in? Yeah, it has Wi-Fi and it has, yeah, let me show you a bit. Uh, this is the device, yeah, sorry for the mess mm -hmm. with the cables. Yeah, it's perfect. It's Wi-Fi, two antennas of Wi-Fi, two antennas of 3G. So actually at some point you could see that it was loading the tele mm -hmm. model. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Um, 
Well, I don't know what I to expect believe... because my application doesn't have anything, but. Well, nothing then will really truly happen. What it'll do exactly. is just simply join Belina Cloud. I mean, like mine here, I can bring my screen share back on. Check. So now the device is online, it is connected, Belina Engine is running, it is basically waiting for a container. So what you would do at this point is you could build a Docker file, use the Belina CLI, and push the container to your fleet of devices. I've only got one in my fleet. Yeah, you actually have two my, of them. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say you got two. Sorry for this. Yep. I don't know if both of yours are plugged in at the moment, but... Right, so you have one online, one offline. Mm -hmm. So you're at the point now where you have no releases. We haven't exactly. pushed a container. It's fucked the build, yeah. But the device is online and ready. So your next step, yeah, I mean, that thing doesn't even need to be on your desk at this point. You can go stick it out in a factory. You could go stick it out in the middle of the desert so long as it has power and connectivity. And push your container to it. Um, mm -hmm. Easy as that. The only difference I would say is to make sure that in your Docker file, you are using the uh, from uh, Bolina lib slash, and then what is it uh, per, no, it's a uh, percentage device type, right? To make sure that it's pulling an x86 container or just manually um, include, you know, from Belina Lib slash a generic x86 underscore 64, and then, you know, what, Ubuntu or Debian mm -hmm. or whatever, Python or, you know. So you just have to be, um, just have to make sure that you're pulling an x86 container and there's different ways of going about it. But yeah, it's mm -hmm. ready. It's ready for a workload. Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, well, it was a little bit more complicated than I, than I expected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I learned the hard way to do it with uh, well, that's yeah, a with good, shell. <laughs> that's a good thing, but um, interesting. You shouldn't really have even had to have done that. Um, I don't know why your UEFI BIOS environment didn't just pick up the stick the way mine did. Um, but that's it. We covered it. Yeah, that was, when, a, that was a good exercise, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Just to struggle my, yeah. To stretch mm -hmm. my brain and my <laughs> well i'm i'm a little surprised you even had to go that deep down into that rabbit hole but um yeah most of them are just as simple as choose it from the menu mm -hmm. hit enter yeah. and it boots right through that should be yeah exactly usb should be there as, as you show yep. yeah in this case in some cases it it's not happening but yeah there are uh, solutions right yep. so yep so all right well i think we I think covered it went five minutes over but that's all right um let's do one last uh reminder if you are in athens uh we have a job posting that just went up for what was it called mark fulfillment coordinator i think was the exactly. title of it um share it on the I, we didn't still share it on, on, the, the, on yeah. the chat so perfect there it is yeah. Um, so take a look at that, and it's then a coordinator in Athens, yep. the Athens yep. office. So if you or your f friends or family are in Athens, by all means, there's a job posting there. Uh, anything else? I think no, I think we are good. Off. So <clears throat> next we, week, yeah, we would like to have everyone submitting applications on the newest Belena hub for OpenFleet. Go to mm -hmm. Belena, the Belena blog. Maybe we can put the link yep. as well here I'll where you will it. see the instructions. So anyone now actually with a with a Belena Cloud application can introduce that application into the into the hub in a really easy way. But you will need to wait one week to <laughs> to see yeah. it here live on the IoT Happy Hour. But if you read the, the blog post, you will understand how we I am putting it in right now it's going in there's awesome. the blog post yeah um mm -hmm. i want to make sure we get you know 
a little bit, had a little bit of time, any bugs or anything that needs to be finished up, finalized. Um, but we'll cover it next week in detail. Absolutely. Okay. So it was great. Thanks for uh, introducing me into the x86 wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, um, you had to go through a little bit of pain. I didn't realize your device was going to require any of that. I thought it would be as easy as put exactly. your stick no, in I and thought, choose yeah, it from let the me menu. Share my screen. And the... <laughs> I thought it was going to be just a matter of plug in, use the yeah. arrows, hit enter. But um, well, no, now I can imagine little... what you were thinking. Like, what yeah. he wants to yeah, share? Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, everyone. Well. Thank you. And Mark, you want to hit the button? We'll say sure. goodbye and we'll see everyone see next week. week. All Have right. Have a good weekend. Yep. Bye. Bye.